okay so if we don't want to allow our users to type things into text boxes or at least we want to be cognizant of that and to mitigate any risks associated with it how can we do that All right, I'm going to show you a couple of different things there's different strategies I'm going to show you the most likely one you'll want to use okay, so give me a second I shut my report builder down in the uh, previous one so I'm going to make a new data source and it's just my shared data source to production and the first thing I'm actually going to do this time, instead of letting the data set cause the creation of the parameter, is I'm going to implicitly declare the parameter. And this is going to be the color parameter. And I'm going to prompt the user, please select which color to view. It is a text. And do you want to allow them to search multiple values? I don't care. I'm going to make that decision later. Right. Give me a second. We're going to walk through all of this. Right. So I say, OK. Now, what I want to do is I want to have these colors pre-populated. I want a drop down of the colors that are in the database. So here's what you do. You're going to make a new data set. And I'm going to call it colors. And you need to figure out your query. This is going to be a distinct color from the table ordered alphabetically. Okay. So the distinct command, you probably already know, but it just returns the unique colors in that table. Cool. Right? I say OK. Which ones is it? It's every one, every color. And so I'm going to now go back to my color parameter and I'm going to say under the available values that I want to get the values from a query. You see it defaults to none. None means let's put a text box up there and let's now say to the users you type in what you want. Specify values says I've typed in, I have pre-selected the allowable values in this text box for you or get values from a query colors colors color okay so you got to understand this screen here let me just talk to you the data set I named it colors the value field is what is passed to the query the label field is what the user sees in the drop down list it just so happens for the color that black is both the label and the value. But there's going to be cases where you want it to display the user name, like the customer first and last name. But then the value you want to pass back is the customer ID. So you'd have different examples. And we'll see some examples of that. So let's do this first. We say that. And so now I want to define another data set, calling it products. And it is to give me the products. And of course, I'm being silly on my little uh, queries here, where color equal or in. Do I want to allow more than one color to be selected? If so, it has to be in. If I only want to allow one color, it can be equal. But I'll give you my mentality here. If I always write this as an N, then I never have to change my query. At the parameter definition, I can choose whether to put in one value or multiple values. Let's see if I can say that a different way. Um, so I, I, like I would never write this query as an equal. Uh, even if today, while I'm writing this particular parameter, um, this particular query, this report, if I know that today and for the foreseeable future, I will never use or allow more than one color to be passed in, I'm still probably going to put in because there is no performance penalty for using a one value parameter versus a multi value parameter within. There's one single SQL statement where color in. If instead I said where color equal, 
and then six months from now I have to change this parameter to allow multiple values then I have to also change the query to allow multiple values so I'm just always going to choose n right there because there's no there's no way I can mess up if I choose n in my query so that's just kind of like my suggestion to you just use n and up here in your parameter hey, I'll define that okay. Uh, down here in this, so we, we're color in down here. Okay? Up here in the parameter now, by default, your parameter only accepts one value. If you want it to allow multiple values, then you check the box right there. Okay? All right, so we've defined the available values that it's going to return the values from the query. So the order of operations is when the report runs, SQL Server is going to go get the list of colors. So it's going to run that query. It's going to pre-populate the text box that says, uh, please select which colors to view. Once the user chooses the color, then it will run the products data set based on that color. Okay, let's say okay, and let's drag a table onto the surface here. Um, and it wants me, the problem that I'm having right now is oh, I need the correct data there. So I had the wrong schema being chosen right there. So, and color, and F5. And so I did not put a default value in, so it still says the color is per missing. But notice I can't type it in. I have a drop-down list now. So it's choosing right here what the options are. Pick the color. Can I choose more than one? No. I choose a single value, like I choose multi, and I hit view report, and it goes and returns those. I can't type anything in any longer. But what's nice about this is this is a dynamic list. If somebody tomorrow adds in a fuchsia color, it will show up in the report. Now, just a couple of things here. Uh, double click on my color and tell it that I want to allow multiple values here. Right, so that's what I'm checking the box for. Rerun the report. Did I rerun it? Notice a different text box decision down here, and we can now do a select all. We can choose these. We can make whatever decisions that we want. Okay, you can see it just reflects up at the top and down here what we've chosen. So really cool. I think that's easy. But notice here how I all I did was change it right here. I didn't have to go change my query again, right? Why? Because I did it with n. Had I made the query equal, it would have failed because now there are multiple values. Okay. So I'm just saying always use n. Um, okay, so th there's just so much here uh, that we're you just got to play with so much of it here. Um, the available values, the specify values part. So I'm not going to get the values from a query this time. I'm just going to put in like the label. Um, black, we can put in black. Uh, oops. Uh, under available values, I'll add another one. Uh, azul, uh, which would be blue and what is black is it like negro I think is what it is and then uh, amarillo I have to forgive my uh, Texas accent there uh, yellow uh, so th this would be like my attempt to do some uh, localization maybe so I say okay and now when we run the report it's not going to the database to query it's only using the values that I typed in that's the difference. Do you want a dynamic list in which it queries the data set, right? Or do you want a statically put in, statically typed list where you actually typed in the values? Right? That's your call. You pick whichever one you want. Sometimes you need one, sometimes you need the other. I, you can't really say you always want one or another. So you just pick which one you want. So it's basically doing translation. It's just bringing back all of the blue ones. Uh, so, you know, that's pretty simple to do your uh, pre-population, if you will, and it prevents that SQL injection. 
It makes sure that your users aren't typing in something. They're not having to guess at what values are there, which is a big frustration. Um, what they may think is popular, uh, you know, they type in something and there's nothing there. Uh, so having that pre-populated list, I think, makes a big, big difference to people. Now, what we've got to do, we still got to go through a little bit more here. Um, we're going to continue. We're kind of done with the available values here. We need to talk about in the next video the default, the advanced, and the rest of the general, the visible, hidden, and internal. So I'll talk about those. I'll see you in the next video.